Uh, I know you're always looking for a finish. Tough fight here. How uh, pleased are you with your performance? Yes, yes. Uh, man, nothing but, you know, props to Georgie. He's a veteran. Dude's got 40 fights. Been in uh, Bellator for a long time. I felt great, though, tonight. Um, you know, he's, he's tough, but I felt like I beat him uh, th three rounds. Or two rounds, I would say, to one, be, I'll be honest. Um, but I feel good, man. I feel good. Coming in, I'm sharp. Um, I'm on rhythm, in my zone. Uh, you know, since being in Bellator, I fought, I think, number one contender, Benson. I felt like I had a close fight. Could have gone my way. I beat a top get 10 guy in Brandon Gertz, my next fight. Now I beat somebody even tough, a veteran, top 10, top 15, too, here. So I have one more fight left with Bellator on my contract. So hopefully Bellator and, and my management can work something out because I feel like I fit perfectly into this 55-pound division. Uh, what did you think of the judges scoring being a little bit all over the place? And what did your corner tell you going into the third round? Uh, the corners told me, Hey, we need to pick it up this round. And that's what I did. Uh, just, it, you know, fights like that, it's just, it's a dog fight and who can keep pushing a little bit more and, and who wants it more. And, and I, I feel like I did the, the judge who scored at 30, 27 for Georgie, uh, is out of his mind. There's absolutely no possible way. And he absolutely sucks at judging. In my opinion, other two judges had it correctly. Uh, so, congratulations on the big win. Uh, can you just, uh, you said you have one more fight in your contract. Who would you be your ideal next opponent uh, before your contract runs out? My ideal opponent? Yes. Would be Baby Pitbull. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, you know, he's the champ. He's the guy that I always have my eye on. And who else is left in the division? I mean, you have Chandler and uh, Benson tonight. It's a close fight. We'll see if Chandler stays. I heard he's a free agent after this. Um, maybe a number one contender fight. But, I mean... You know, again, I beat a top 10 guy, beat a, a veteran of the, the sport here. I've already fought the number one contender and had a very close fight with him. So, we know, what, what more does Bellator want, in my opinion? And uh, can you just talk about how are you physically? Uh, do you have any injuries? Is there anything that uh, doctors diagnose you with? Or are you... Uh... No, I, I feel good. You know, I'm sore. Everything's a little sore. But that's what happens when you fight good guys, man. I mean, you look at who I fight. Look at my resume. I've had some tough losses, tough wins. But I fight good guys, man. I, I've got balls. I put it on the line and I go out there. I'm not a guy in the division, you know, sitting around for 12 years, never fought anybody in the top 10, you know, have a good record. But I, I go out there and I put it on the line. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's how I feel right now. I feel good. Congrats, Miles. I mean, you know, at the end of the fight, you're sitting there waiting for the decision. You feel like you've won at least two rounds and, you know, you hear 30, 27 for your opponent. What, you know, what does that do? And in in, what's going through your mind there? I'm praying to God. <laughs> I'm praying to God just... Please, Lord, you know, bless me with this win. I know I worked hard for it. I know I earned every second of the victory. And, uh, you know, you don't never know with the judges, man. That's, that's the thing in our sport. Judges sometimes can be out of their minds. And they don't even have any qualifications, man. They need to have ex-fighters, MMA fighters, or judges need to have courses on jujitsu, wrestling, cage work, not just some dude that knows, uh, knows the athletic commission and, and, you know, judge boxing fights. I'm just being honest. I mean, I don't have no control over that stuff, but if you want my honest opinion from a fighter's aspect, that's how I feel. And, you know, like you said, you fought Benson. Would you like that fight back? I mean, would that be one you'd want to run back? Absolutely. Like, if, if me and Bellator can, can figure something out, you know, I, I threw Bellator a bone. Like, you, you signed me, and they're like, hey, you want to come right into the division, fight the number one contender in Ireland, main event? And I was like, yeah, yeah, like, let's go. They want people like me. They want guys that are going to put on the line, fight, fight consistently. And if I do that, I just, uh, you know, I'm 31 years old. I, I have a, a more years, but I have a family. I have stuff that I need to take care of. And, and I just need to be, it needs to be a fair, fair trade. You know, like I'll get married to Bellator. We can get married, but let, let's have a, a good relationship. I'll do a couple from the internet, starting with Matthew Puttern. Hey, congrats on the win, Miles. Hey, my first question is to you. Of course, you were just talking about God before. You know, what has he done for you in your life? God? Yes. Man, uh, I mean, God, God is everything, dude. I, you know, I'll tell you this. I know there's a God because there's been times when I'm down and out in my life and logic, nothing around me makes sense. And I lean into something that is greater than me. And it always, I always find a lesson. And I move forward in my life from it. Um, I have my own relationship with God and uh, man, God, God is everything at, at the end of the day. Like I know, uh, I know where I'm going when I die and that gives me a, a very, uh, a very faithful approach each day. And uh, you know, and I, I tell you what, I made a, a promise to God too. I said, God, if you, 
bless me in my life and you bless me with my goals, my family, and you bless me with, with what I want, I will do my best in my life to shine, to shine your light. And I feel like that's, that's all I try and do. You know, it comes down to God, Jesus is, uh, you know, I, I, just, I just try and love, love my, my fellow men. I, I'm, a, I'm a sheep in life, but I'm a wolf in the cage is the way I look at it. I can go around each day in life, love everybody, whether you have my opinion, you don't, whether you believe in God or don't, I don't care. Um, the only difference is those when I step in the cage, I don't care. I just, uh, I, that, that's mine. That's my cage. Randall. A second Bellator fight back after the pandemic. How was it for you to come in and deal with all the extra added nonsense with the COVID? Um, the only thing that was silly was I didn't get to train with my team a lot. I had to just have my boy, Jeremy Stevens, one-on-one -on -one, and my head coach, Eric Del Fiero. I had to limit myself from a lot of, uh, a lot of people. And then the aspect of fight week was, was crazy, man. I spent so much time in a hotel room being under quarantine, but it's just adversity, you know, when you're a fighter, you're faced with so much adversity and just one more thing I have to overcome. And then for you, how was it fighting with no fans? I, you know, I, I fought on the ultimate fighter. Uh, it was like, honestly, it was like training, you know, it's like, I'm in the gym. I, I don't care. I'll, I'll do either or it's, it's fun with the fans. It's fun without the fans. I love the setup tonight. Though, I'll tell you that very personal, um, very, just classy, very classy. Drew Pierce. Hey, Miles, congratulations. Um, are you looking for a quick turnaround? Um, are you looking to get back in there? Or are you going to take some time off with the family? I, you know what? I, it's up to Bellator and my management. Honestly, that's, it comes down to what Bellator and what my management can work out. I told you I have balls. I'm down to take fights. I'm down to, uh, to, to, put, to put stuff on the line. You know, I'm not just going to sit around and talk. I'll get in there and I'll fight. Good guys, veterans, top 10 guys, number one contenders. But, uh, you know, Bellator, my management, need to have a talk first. That, that's my take on it. Thanks and congratulations. Thank you. We'll do two more. Connor Northrup. Hey, Miles. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Oh, uh, once you skipped that guillotine in the third round, you know, at that moment, did that feel like that was the time to kind of sway the judges? Uh, you know, watching Georgie, the dude has a nasty guillotine. And, uh, you know, when we clinched in that third round, he had on me. I'm not going to lie. It was tight. And, I, you know, what I was thinking is I was thinking – those damn times that I was on the, in the gym and dudes had me in tight guillotines and I had to just hold on and almost go to sleep. I was thinking like, damn, I'm happy I did that because that's exactly what I did right there. He was squeezing so hard. And for a second, I thought like, oh man, I'm just going to go out. But he loosened up. I, I worked the grip. He went tight again. I loosened up. I worked the grip and I was just like, damn, I got my head out. And I was like, I just got, I got to get that back. So I just started just ground and pounding. Yeah, I, I know pre-fight you said that a win over a company man like Georgie would be enough for the title fight. Now that the fight's over, you got the win. How good of an argument do you think you made? You know, I, I feel like there's not really anybody in this division that hasn't already had their shot or it just, you know, they, it just doesn't make sense. You got Benson and, and uh, Chandler, who's obviously, that, that could be a number one contender fight. You have Chandler, who might be a free agent. You have Baby Pitbull, who doesn't fight hardly for the to defend the title. He's off doing whatever. So uh, I'm here, man. I'm new blood. I feel like I speak well. Uh, I can be a company man. And I feel like, I mean, dude, like, you know, they can get behind me and, and we can work something out. Thanks, Miles. Thank you.